Welcome back to part two of this uh, Bosch KJTronic CIS fuel distributor reseal. So um, I left off before we finished off uh, the full disassembly um, because I was getting into a part um, which could be quite kind of mission critical and I already fucked it up. Uh, basically, when I took it apart, you'll remember all these springs here. I just... Like an idiot. I should have kept track, but I took them, threw them haphazardly. Each of these springs coincide to their respective holes. I don't know which one is which. And these control pistons here are set for whatever the spring pressure is here. So I'm probably going to have to, you know, the only way they're all mess, mixed. These are all mixed up right now. So there's no way to telling which one goes where. All these settings are going to be wrong. Um... But I'll still go through and show you how to measure this. Um, normally, you just put it back on. So once this unit is back together, it's going to have to get sent out. And basically, uh, they attach some fittings to here. And you can measure the volume flow and adjust these control pistons accordingly. So right now, this is what we're going to do. Starting with number one, you're going to want a uh, pencil, a slide gauge, for checking the height and uh numbering this and you want to record all these values here so you're just going to use the same offset this gives you a nice stable base to work off of start at number one slide gauge down seven point six six So they're all uh, maximum spread was about 30, 30, not thou, 0.3 millimeter. This is a dumb thing about taking these out, these adjustment pistons, because then uh, you have to keep flipping it back and forth to get the correct height. So <clears throat> I already showed you in the last section, got all these uh, set screws back in where they should be for their adjustments, which are in here. And now all these little guys have uh, these crush washers and we're gonna be swapping those with some new crush washers, the copper ones. So I'm gonna, every hole that I open up. All right, so we're gonna be <clears throat> putting a new seal on this uh, piston here, this control piston. Um, this is all the original stuff that came off this guy. And as you can see, I set something upon my filter here. So this is garbage and it's probably just going to cause issues. So I'm going to be running no filters. I'm running no filters here along with, uh, 
here as well because my old filters, let's see how well we can see that, are garbage. They are, uh, you know, when I'm pulling, pulling them out, you know, the rubber got all messed up and everything. And nobody makes the filters for KE units. There are filters for the K units. So the K units are just slightly bigger and there's nothing there for them. So we have this kit here, which looks to have uh, the eight O-rings that go on these little guys here. Um, it has one larger O-ring, which goes on one of these guys, I believe. Um, has these little control guys and I think I might have to reuse this phenolic spacer here and uh, there should be an, one other um, there should be one and two which might be some like here I don't know and this is all part of the kit that I got so we'll see what works where <laughs> Unfortunately, I am going to have to reuse this filter, even though it's... I got my filter back on here. I think it goes like so. <laughs> I have one complete missing open window. But I, I think I need this mainly for the this to, to butt up against. New O-ring is on here. Hopefully that's how it all goes together. So I ended up using this uh, filter to hold it. And I moved the position. I checked my old video of where this actually should be. And you can notice here, do a little measurement actually. So for measuring here, it's about nine millimeters. From this lip to here and this phenolic spacer ends up touching this spacer right here ends up touching all these guys and this filter gets pushed down as far back down as possible obviously this is not good but it is what it is i put just a little bit on here help this o-ring slip into place Now we got to put our 
control piston back in the housing here. So we have the housing marked. And um, first the spring goes in. And this goes in like so. I had to look at my old video to see how it goes. So if you just stand it up vertically, it should just go right in place. Look how it goes in by itself. Then you have the spring here, taking care of everything else. This guy goes with this face upwards. And this one goes on like so. We take this guy and remember there's a specified height between this surface here and this guy, which is 0.48 millimeters on uh, our application here on this specific unit. All right, now what we have here is the electrohydraulic differential pressure sensor actuator. I don't know actually what it is, but um, there's those two O-rings that uh, mounts up here. There are the two green ones. And there's also a little fine filter kind of deal there. It comes with the kit. So there's a new crush washer and O-ring and Honestly, I'm not gonna mess with it. Um, there's a little adjustment screw in there. I do not have testing equipment to do this correctly. And that is so small, I'm concerned. I'm not even gonna be able to reset it where it should be. So all I'm gonna do is put the O-rings back on. This guy is back on here. This is ready to get installed back on your uh, manifold assembly. So your little piston here rides on this little guy here. And as, uh, as this valve opens up with more air, it'll push up on this guy here, which in turn pushes your fuel quantity piston up as well. It has a unique pattern, so you can't really mess it up. And go ahead and mount this guy back here. And uh, everything that I had on here, all my adjustments are moot. All right, it's about in this position. Thankfully, I'm able to see the witness mark to where it was before. Take your screws and bolt it in. All right, so you got your distributor installed on your housing here. And remember, I had it all apart. We're gonna just put this guy back together now. <laughs> 